Okay, it's a 2022 Nissan Frontier. It's a no start. Hit the keyless go button. And it's not starting. Service automatic transmission. What else? Seems about the only message. We're gonna see what codes we have. All right, so this is the first sign that we have a CAN network issue potentially. And it says VIN could not be read out. And I'll explain that later as to why. Okay, so because it wouldn't recognize the VIN, I typed it in manually and it's not recognizing the VIN because the PCM is not talking on the uh, CAN network of the vehicle. So it doesn't know without me manually typing in. And that seems to be true of a lot of vehicles when the modern car's powertrain module does not talk or the powertrain CAN network isn't talking. That means there's no broadcast of the VIN number and the scan tool also can't read the VIN number. Okay, so right off the bat, seeing codes here, current active problem, CAN communication circuit U1000 in multiple modules. Now, believe it or not, the ABS is not on the same network as the engine computer. We'll look at that in a minute, but all these codes here, I printed out and we'll look at. So these are all the codes you see there on the scan tool. So ABS modules, thrown CAN codes, the ADAS system, the gateway module, which you cannot just own the CAN circuit from the dial link connector because of the gateway. So that complicates things quite a bit. This is what the system looks like. So diagnostic CAN communication is okay. We know that because we're communicating. IT CAN commu communication circuit is okay. Then we have chassis CAN and that's okay because we can communicate with those modules. ITS CAN communication, which is ADAS, it's okay. Then we have vehicle CAN communication 2 circuit, which is ABS transfer case control unit steering angle sensor. I don't know why, but they put ABS on a separate CAN through the gateway, which is this six chan channel gateway. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but it's a CAN gateway. Then we have vehicle CAN communication on this 22 Frontier none of these modules are talking and the ECM has its own private network to talk to the intake valve timing control module so the variable valve timing has its own bus why because it's way faster than and probably cheaper but so we filled these two buses now let's go on the factory scan tool should say dealer scan tool, I guess. Can diag. It says checking. Now I'm using the uh, Nissan newest dealer interface here. That's what it looks like. Okay, now it's asking for what network type do we have. I cannot find this model code, it says 18 digits. Refer to model plate VIN or VIN plate or model label on vehicle to find the SS, SIS code or model code, 18 digits. And when I look down on the model plate, it shows model, but it's incomplete. So I'm not sure why that is. So another thing we can do is figure out what this stuff means and if it has these ECUs. 
So I believe that's an audio video module, differential lock, IBC, and wireless charger. Um, Got to look up to see what that is. Okay, so what I found out is wireless charger, tel uh, telematics module, so I think cellular card, rear differential lock module, surround view camera, and we have all these different options. And I did type in the VIN manually, and it still wasn't, I still have to figure this out on my own. So what I like to do is just choose them all just to make sure. We'll go to set. Okay, red means there's a problem. So if we go to, let's try can one. Click here. Here's our can high and low voltages. So we do have voltage. Now I assume this is being read off the module that I clicked on or the gateway, the six chan gateway. Ignition on. Let's go to TCM. Not detected. ECM. Not detected. This is a CAN2, which is the ABS separate bus basically. It says normal. It doesn't have four wheel drive, that's why that four wheel drive module is not detected. And that's why that previous screen, I guess, matters for options. We'll go to the ITS CAN. So this one must not have surround view because it says not detected. So the ADAS, which is ITS, is working on that CAN network. Another ADAS channel. Six chan gateway. Normal. Drive train can. That's that variable valve timing. Okay, so we need to go to the VCAN, vehicle can network one. Go click on explanation. Try a list view. Okay, so it is saying that on this network, the 6chan CAN gateway is normal. Okay, let's try and let's go ahead and disconnect the engine computer and see what happens. Okay, I disconnected the engine computer and we're still not getting any uh, CAN1 activity. Okay, so we're gonna very carefully, just loosely touch the metal. We're not gonna overspread it. And we have 10.6 on one of the CAN wires, ignition on. And then we have 9.7 on the other. So somewhere, either in a module or in the wiring, we're shorting to another circuit or to battery power. Cross short somewhere in the wiring or in the module or one of the modules can, can transceivers. But that's very unlikely. I know how the CAN transceivers are wired because I repair modules, so I don't think it's a bad CAN transceiver because it limits the voltage. 
Okay, so we're properly attached to that circuit with the right tools. We're not overspreading the terminals, hopefully. And so we have nine to 10 volts. There is absolutely no activity. And that voltage is really high. Now, if this is a LIN bus, that could be normal, potentially, if a module is disconnected on the LIN network. This is CAN, so we have a bias of 2.5. Out of all the modules, we should have a bias of 2.5. We have way too much voltage, basically. So we need to figure this out. Okay, so now we're checking CAN high to CAN low, and we have battery disconnected. We have 120 ohms. Now we can check the terminals at the CAN high and low connections on the PCM side and make sure we also have 120. So what that tells us is, at the very least, our BCM, which is the other terminating module, is hooked up on the other end of the wiring harness. We don't have a cross short uh, to one another on the CAN wires, so that's good. We're also gonna check it to ground, each wire. Okay, we have 360 ohms from the CAN low wire to ground and we're gonna check can high to ground. So one of the downsides to these is they break off somewhat easily. And this one broke off in the connector. So I gotta try and get that out without damaging anything. These are really tiny terminals. And you might say, well, it looks easy. Well, first of all, this went over it. And it's only really designed to be put together and not so much taken apart on purpose. And so the locks are super fragile, especially with age. Luckily, this is a two-year-old vehicle that I'm diagnosing for a shop, but clips on here like so. And you might say, well, it looks easy. Well, first of all, this went over it and it's only really designed to be put together and not so much taken apart on purpose. And so the locks are super fragile, especially with age. Luckily, this is a two-year-old vehicle that I'm diagnosing for a shop, but clips on here, like so. Okay, so we're tied in here to the PCM, and we have 120 ohms on can high and low. So that's a good sign. Again, we, we have incorrect bias voltage, so we gotta figure that out first. So one thing I like to do, especially on a new vehicle, is match up the tape types, match up the zip ties. You really shouldn't be able to tell anyone's ever been in here. So on this one, so I don't break it off again, spend an hour trying to get it out, which I was successful without hurting anything, I'm gonna go in the lock release not the actual terminal. So we're on the cam wire with the disconnected PCM and I just took the battery up. The ignition is not on. For a moment it was at one volt and now we're at zero. Go to ohms. We still have that really low resistance. Okay on this two-year-old truck I, uh, I disconnected the connector that's a breakaway. So I've isolated some of the modules, half the modules. So let's go and check the resistance on the can to ground. We had 300 ohms before, which is way too little. Okay, now we have 10,000 ohms on our can. I think it's low or high, but we're checking it to ground, which before it was too low.
Let's look at our voltage when we turn the key on now. All right, so we have zero volts. Now that may be because that breakaway fed power to the integrated power module, which turns on a lot of our uh, computers on the network. So we have to determine what to do next. Okay, so one thing that this has told me by disconnecting here and checking the CAN resistance to ground at the PCM, which was right here, it tells me once we disconnected and went to a normal resistance, about 10,000 to ground, that we have a problem most likely this way. So interior side of the electrical bus system. So now we need to go in here. And we need to find this joint connector here, or we need to find this one here and disconnect, reconnect here because I'm not getting any power to the any of the modules here and and we'll go ahead and check on the scan tool really quick and see what happens but I'm pretty sure we're still gonna have a problem because we still have too low resistance so let's try and find a joint connector okay so we now have that bolt connector over there disconnected and all of a sudden we have communication it looks like to the BCM the cluster on that vehicle can network um, let's see here. So those two modules, let's click, look at our chart. Okay, so plugged in that connector and we're back to losing our CAN uh, 1, I believe it was, which is our powertrain CAN. On that Nissan, I ended up plugging everything back in and I hooked up, hooked up the oscilloscope in parallel with the CAN1 network by back programming at the IPM. And this is the signal that I ended up getting. We don't have a 2.5 volt bias. We're about three and a half to four volts on the bias. This is like five volts on the CAN bias. And it was not looking at all like a good signal. This is CAN and high and low. So I knew that we definitely had a problem. Earlier in the video, you saw that my key on engine off voltage on can high and low was like nine volts. So we have a cross short, like I was thinking. The, the difficult part here is that this 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't have any star connectors you can unplug, like Mopar or Mercedes. It doesn't have anything but splice blocks. I didn't see any Nissan factory dealer tools that plugged into the splice blocks with rocker switches to help isolate a problem like this. So all you can really do is start unplugging modules and I'll show you what was found. What this shop ended up finding on this vehicle, I just, you know, my business is to give them a direction and I told them to start unplugging things inside, especially if anything looked like it might've been spilt in that area. So they started with the shifter module and I think I'd recommended that, but regardless, there was uh, coffee or milk or something spilt all over the console and it got in this connector and it was cross shorting I believe here to power on the CAN network because of spilt drinks and there were multiple spilt drinks in the vehicle but these interior electrical harnesses do not have weather packing I have yet to find a car company that provides sealing on interior harnesses because it costs more and you're not really, you know, supposed to be exposing the elements to your harness inside the vehicle. Your cars are not even, you know, Japanese cars, as reliable as you might think they are. The electrical harnesses are not designed for water inside. They are on the outside, though, but not on the inside. 